Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the differences between a public IP address versus an elastic IP address in AWS. Jump into the demo of uh, you know a public IP address versus elastic IP address. I've created this small table over here to basically understand the differences between the two. So let us take a couple of uh, attributes and compare the differences between a public IP address and an elastic IP address. So first is what is a public IP address? So public, a public IP address is assigned to your instance from Amazon's pool of public uh, IPv4 addresses. And this IP address is not associated with your AWS account. So essentially, when you uh, launch an EC2 instance, uh, and you basically say um, auto assign um, public IP address uh, the IP address that is associated with your EC2 instance is a public IP address uh, an elastic IP address is a static IP again it's the IPv4 address that is designed for dynamic com cloud computing an elastic IP address is associated with your AWS account uh, the next attribute is cost. So, uh, and public IP address is free of cost. Amazon does not charge you for providing you um, an, a public IP address. You know, but as far as an elastic IP address is concerned, you will be charged for an elastic IP address if it is not associated with a running EC2 instance. Or let's say if it is associated with a stopped instance or an unattached uh, network interface. Number of IPs uh, that can be associated to an EC2 instance. So typically you have uh, one I public IP address associated to your EC2 instance by default as long as you have requested for it. You can attach more than one elastic IPs to an instance. Um, by default, any additional elastic IPs that are associated, that is basically more than one, those elastic IPs will be charged. Uh, nature of these IP addresses, whether they're static or dynamic, so uh, any public IP address that is associated with your EC2 instance are dynamic in nature. What that means is that those IP addresses will change every time an instance restarts. An elastic IP address is a static IP address and it will not change if the instance restarts for whatsoever reason. Limit per account, uh, unlimited as many number of uh, EC2 instances you can potentially you know, uh, uh, launch in your uh, account, possibly let's say on demand is 20 uh, in case you go and increase the limit or you request to increase the limit you could potentially do that but uh, yeah there's no upper cap or anything that restricts AWS from giving you a public IP address as long as you are able to launch an EC2 instance okay so the cap will be on the number of EC2 instances and not on the public IP address as far as the elastic IP address, there is a limit of five per account. Um, you can potentially request an increase, but definitely um, those additional IP addresses will be charged. Uh, recovery. So can you recover a public IP address once you have released it? The answer to that question is no. No, it is not recoverable. After you release it, it's gone back to the pool and uh, it could be potentially assigned to somebody else. Uh, for an elastic IP, after you've released an elastic IP, you might be able to recover it. Okay, uh, there are certain constraints. For example, it should not be assigned to somebody else. If it's assigned to someone else, then you will not be able to recover uh, your IP address in this case. Mode of recovery, uh, as far as the elastic IP address is concerned, the only way to recover back your elastic IP address, if it is not assigned to someone else, is via Amazon EC2 APIs 
or using the command line tools. Share publicly. So is it advisable to share a public IP address uh, publicly? Uh, the answer to that question is no. Because if your instance restarts in that case, the public IP address will change and so will the public DNS change. And hence, neither of them will be valid. So the URL that you have shared or the IP address that you have shared with uh, someone else will no longer work. As far as an elastic IP is concerned, it is static in nature as we discussed earlier. So hence, if you share that uh, externally or publicly, you should be good. Okay, so uh, after discussing the differences between uh, public IP and elastic IP, let us uh, look at you know how we can associate uh, uh, elastic IP address and uh, uh, how we can disassociate an elastic IP address versus uh, basically what happens if our instance restarts. Okay, so for example, I have this. Uh, EC2 instance over here as you see and uh, this is a T2 micro instance it's a Linux instance and as you see I had basically requested a public uh, address uh, for this particular EC2 instance so this is my public uh, IP and this is my public DNS that is being associated with my EC2 instance over here by default now let us go ahead and request an elastic IP. So as you see over here for the down, under network and security, you can see elastic IPs. So click on elastic IPs and basically you say, click on allocate new address. And you will see that the scope of this address is in my VPC. Now this is basically in my default VPC. So I'm gonna say go ahead and allocate it. So this elastic IP address has been allocated to me. And basically, as we discussed earlier, this elastic IP address is actually associated to my AWS account. Now, you don't want to keep an elastic IP address, uh, you know, unutilized or unassociated for a longer time because the longer you keep it unassociated, you will be charged for it. So let's associate this address. So let's Go and click on associate address and we will associate this to an active or a running EC2 instance as you see this is a running instance over here okay and I'm going to go ahead and click on associate so remember this is my IP address 18211201246 so I'm going to go ahead and associate it So now, uh, going back to my EC2 instances, if I go back to my EC2 dashboard, you will see that the public IP address has changed. And now this is my elastic IP, is now my public IP, and I can go ahead and share this public DNS uh, externally with my friends or my customers or my, uh, my clients uh, as required and as necessary. Okay, uh, let's see if what happens if we stop this. Okay, so let's see if I, if I stop this EC2 instance or I reboot this EC2 instance. So let's try and reboot it. So after a while, you will see that the instance state is is stopping. Okay, um, I will pause the video now for a little bit till the time. Um, my instance is reboots and then you will see that the public IP address remains the same.
So my instance is back up again and as you see it's in a running mode right now and my public IP address is still the same. It is the elastic IP address that we had associated. So if you click on this address again, it will take you back to uh, the elastic IP address. So as you see, even if your instance reboots for whatsoever reason, your elastic IP address uh, will remain the same. And essentially in that case, your public IP address will remain the same. Now, if I go ahead and disassociate my elastic IP address, okay, from my EC2 instance. So I'm disassociating this address now. Okay, so my address has been disassociated and as you see, the address has changed here. This is now a, a regular public IP address. Okay. And now if we go ahead and stop and restart this instance, okay, let's go ahead and stop this. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this instance. It's stopping and after a while you will see that the public IP address will be disassociated. Just takes a while to stop. Let us refresh for a little bit. Okay. Okay, so as you see, uh, after a couple of refreshes, the public uh, IP address and the public DNS has been disassociated and you've lost that IP address that you had. Now, if you um, restart this machine all over again, a new public IP address will be associated with this EC2 instance. Uh, my instance is currently still stopping, so I'll have to wait for a little bit for it to be completely stopped. Okay, stopped now. Okay, so now let's say if I restart my instance, you will see that a different public IP address will be associated with my EC2 instance. So let's start this. Okay, so it's currently in a pending state. In a few minutes, uh, we should be able to see the new public DNS associated with this uh, EC2 instance. Okay, so we have the new public IP address as you see. It's, it's totally different. It's 34.227.148.151 and we have a different new public DNS associated as well. Hence, it's not recommended to share your public DNS or your public IP uh, externally because for whatsoever reason, if your EC2 instance restarts, that URL or the public DNS or the IP address will no longer be valid. Hope you enjoyed uh, today's video and uh, this was helpful. Please put your comments uh, below. Uh, let me know if you would like me to record uh, videos on any specific topics and I will certainly make it a point to have them posted as soon as possible. Thank you and talk to you soon. Take care.